All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paw Parrot. It's time for another exciting yarn aboard a whaling ship in the year 1860, so reef in your sails and listen. In our last episode, the good ship Paul Parrot, with all our friends aboard, Johnny, Sue, Dickon, Captain Dalton, Ezra Grange, and old Paul Parrot himself, was overtaken by the wily privateer, Captain Karsh, who, with several boatloads of men, boarded the whaling vessel to search for their diamonds. Karsh has heard about the diamonds from some sole survivor of the catastrophe on Galto Island, who is now aboard his ship. But just who this is, he will not tell. Captain Dalton knows his crew is hopelessly outnumbered, so he does not fight. But he still will not give up the diamonds and threatens to fight to the last man if they are fired upon. At this point of deadlock, a lovely young girl comes aboard the ship from Karsh's vessel to see what is going on. She is Karsh's fiance, and she is very angry to find that her betrothed is really a privateer. Karsh forces Captain Dalton to send Hollings, the Paul Parrot's latest recruit, with ten men back to his own ship, the Africana, as hostage. But just then, a terrific storm sweeps down on them, and the two ships are swept apart. Then a great wave smashes the Paul Parrot's rudder, and she is left to the mercy of the gale. Our story picks up just where we left off last time, and Karsh and Captain Dalton are still arguing. All except the able seamen get below. The decks are almost awash. Mr. Grange, take Johnny and Sue and the young lady and get to my cabin. The rest of you... I tell you, I'm taken over here. I have as many of my men aboard this hulk as you, and I'm given orders. Well, yes, Karsh, this is no time to be arguing. We've got to forget how things are till we ride out this storm. Then we'll take up again where we were. As long as I'm master of this ship, and we're not yet taken captive, I'm given the orders. You are taken captive. I have taken you. You forget the Afrikaner's not standing by to fire at us with your cannons any longer. We're evenly matched now. But there are just as many of my men aboard as yours and more. Gosh, I'll give you three seconds to get out of my way and down to my cabin till this storm's out or blow me down, I'll lay you low. Boy, you can't talk to me like that, you blubber smeared whaler. I'll... Oh! Last Kosh, you talk too much. Well, I warn you. Dickon! Dickon, drag Kosh below and put him in the folks and tie him up to keep him out of mischief. Aye, aye, sir. Look, old Kosh's men are advancing on you, they are. They don't like you knocking out that blooming skipper. Aye, so they are. Men of the Paul Parrot, stand by your arms. Grab before they're washed overboard. And look here, you swabs from the Africana. We're evenly matched now. If you want to fight, my men will give you all you want. If you do get me, you'll have no skipper at all to run the ship. If you take your places and wait till the storm's over, we'll come to terms. You better eat the skipper, you swabs. Lash me to a yard arm. This is a strange ship to you. You can't work through the storm by yourselves. Now, if you join our men to do what we can till the worst of the blow is over, you have an even chance. If you try to take over yourself, the Paul Parrot, without anchor and rudder as she is, will be swamped in less than an hour. I, I will pitch in we'll with you. Stand by. Good. You show good sense. Now, Dickon, we've won the first round. By the time the storm is over, Kosh won't have any more to say aboard this vessel than a sea cow. Aye, sir. Take him below and stop in my cabin and see how the young'uns and Mr. Gray are doing. Aye, aye, sir. And I must say, Captain, you did a neat bit of work, sir. Ah, the blooming <laughs> gale's blowing the feathers off! Ah. Well, hurry below, will you, you old albatross? I've got work to do. Lay on there, men. Tie that lifeline to the mainland. <laughs> Johnny, I'm so frightened. Don't be scared, Sue. This is just an ordinary storm. Any ship can run into a gale like this. Can't they, Mr. Grange? Uh, Yes, Johnny. Uh, I don't believe it more serious than could be expected. Still with our rudder gone, I fear... Oh, but Mr. Grange, with Captain Dalton up there, we can come to no harm. I'm about ready to agree with you, Johnny. That man can get out of any bad situation. And besides, this storm was almost a good thing. It blew us away from the Africana, and maybe we'll still get the upper hand over Captain Karsh. I wonder what the old pirate's doing up on deck now. Oh, Johnny, that pretty lady over there in the corner, she heard what you said. Did you call Bruno Karsh a pirate? Well, well yes, ma'am, I did. Well, he is almost. He's a privateer, isn't he? Oh, dear. I was so afraid of this. Tell me, what was he trying to do when I came aboard? Why, he chased us for a day or more and finally caught up with us. Didn't you know he wanted Uh, our uh, diamond? Johnny is trying to tell you that uh, your Captain Karsh was intending to rob us of a very valuable cargo we're carrying. I didn't know. Oh, I'm so ashamed. And I believed him when he said he was a respectable merchant man. Oh. Oh, please don't cry, miss. If you didn't know about it, it's not your fault. 
Thank you, little girl, but you don't, you don't know what this means to me. What's your name? My name's Sue Grange, and this is my big brother, Ezra, who owns the Paul Parrot. And this is Johnny Robbins, the bravest cabin boy who ever lived. Oh, gee, Sue. I'm happy to know you. Well, you might as well know about me. I'm Annabelle Wilson of New Orleans. Bruno Karsh has been a suitor of mine for years, and, well, he was always so gallant and so so brave, I thought, and he just sort of swept me off my feet. I once heard he'd been a privateer, but he swore to me that that was long ago against his will, that he'd reformed and was now captain and owner of a fine merchant man. I finally promised to wed him, and this was to be our wedding voyage. We were going to be married by an uncle who's a minister in Cape Town, South Africa, and I believed in him. And now... Oh, it's just too horrible. But, gee, think how lucky you were to find out in time. Oh, be quiet, Johnny. That's not the right thing to say. Huh? But I just thought... Oh, that's all right, Miss Annabelle. I'm sure everything will turn out all right. It's Dickon. What's going on up on deck, Dickon? We can't tell a thing down here. The storm doesn't feel like it's getting any better. Oh, blow me down a tank, lad. I've been up and down the companionway a dozen times in the past few hours, and each time it seems worse. Oh, breakers ahead! Stow that, you big-nosed bird. It's the last thing we need to look for, breakers. We are far from any land by the by. Blow me down. Captain Dalton knocked out that belligerent kosh, and I stowed him safe and sound on irons in the old. <laughs> Avast, ain't you happy to hear that? <laughs> Hold your tongue, Dickon. Don't you know this young woman was betrothed to Captain Karsh? Oh, oh so help me, I forgot I did. Oh, I'm bloomin' sorry. But I'm just a blinking rough old sea salt who ain't got no sense about things like that. Pop, he's a blinking stupid old sea salt. Pop, pop. Oh, that's all right, Dickon. You didn't know. Oh, boss, I got to be getting back on deck again. Captain Dalton ordered some canvas put on to hold us. Maybe on some kind of course with our rudder broke. Oh, but ain't no use, I'm thinking. You know, I'd better try to get out. Demons. We're aground, and heaven only knows where out here in the ocean, but we're on the rocks. Rock, rock, man, the lifeboats, we're on the rocks. Rock, rock. Oh, it's a miracle, that's all we can call it. The ship might have been stove in by those rocks and sunk with all hands and passengers lost. But the waves carried her clear over the rocks and left her on this rocky ledge at the back of the beach. She's almost on the sides. And the timbers have been strained. There ain't a vessel afloat but could have took a beating like the good old Paul Parrot did and, and come out of it like this, bless her. Paul Parrot's all right. Paul Parrot's all right. But, Captain Dalton, where are we? What is this island? Well, blow me down, Mr. Grange. I don't rightly know as yet. We can't take our bearings because all my instruments were smashed when we were thrown aground. But if the clouds are cleared for fair and the stars come out tonight, I'll tell you as well as I can. Oh, I think it's wonderful that we were saved. I told you we'd come out all right with Captain Dalton in command. This doesn't look like a very small island. Still, you can't tell. Hold there, everybody. Mr. Wainwright's brought Captain Karsh out of the brig in the ship, and he's bringing him over here to us on the beach. Well, you see, blast you. If you'd let me take over, we wouldn't be on the rocks now. Blow me down, Karsh. I'm afraid the sea must take all the credit for what happened. None of us had control over any of it. But I've got a word or so to say to you. Well, get it over with. Again, we're on even terms. Only this time, we ain't even got a ship to fight over. Aye, Captain. It'll take quite a spell before we can make the Paul Parrot seaworthy again. And so I say to you, Kosh, I'm turning all your men back to you. You're on your own. I smells a rat. What's the bargain? There's no bargain. You take your men and clear out of here. This looks like a fairly sizable island and there's plenty of timber on it. We all stand the same chance to survive. But you and your men get over to the other side and stay there. And don't cross our path or there'll be trouble. What? And leave us marooned on the island when you get the ship refitted? We'll talk that over when the time comes. And if either party sights a vessel that might give us assistance, the other group will be notified. It ain't fair. I know you've got something up your sleeve. But for a temporary agreement, it may do. It'll have to do. I'm giving you no choice. Now, clear out. Mark this well, Dalton. There'll be a day soon when you'll regret the way you've spoken to me. Why, you blasted blaggard. You're just getting your just desserts for your attempted piracy. Oh, swing the blooming pirate from the order. Oh, I'll oh. slit that blinking parrot's throat yet. Well, Annabelle, are you coming with me? Bruno, I can't. You can't? What do you mean? You're my promised bride. You've destroyed my faith in you. I'll have to wait till I come to a definite decision. 
Meanwhile, I can stay with little Sue Grange here in this camp. Look here, Annabelle. You're my betrothed, and you were left under my care. If I say you're coming with me, you are. If I have to drag you... Oh, Bruno, how dare you talk to me like that? One more word out of you to this young woman, and I'll fell you like a spar in a hurricane. Now, hoist anchor and clear. All right, Dalton. You have us. But you'll rule this day. Oh, Captain Dalton, look at this, right here at your foot. It looks like an arrowhead. Blow me down, let me see that. An arrowhead it is, lad. Likely an Indian one. But what would it be doing on this island? This can't be any part of the South American mainland for certain. Man and boy, I've sailed seven seas. I've never seen an arrowhead like that one, I ain't. Let me take a look. Blister and barnacles. I have. There's a tribe of Indians in the Brazilian jungle that chipped their arrowheads in that same shape. If that's true, Captain Dalton, what would it be doing here? There's certainly been no sign of any inhabitants on this island so far. Captain Dalton! That arrow, it whizzed right by you and stuck in the tree just behind you. Well, blow me down. Ah! Injuns! Bloomin' red injuns! Ah! Ah! What's this? How can there be Indians on this undetermined island? What's in store for our friends now? How long will they be forced to stay on this strange shore? And what of Annabelle Wilson's decision to stay with Dalton's crew? Will Karsh make trouble? Be sure to listen for the next transcribed adventure in the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Until then, this is your Paul Parrot announcer, Dave Ward, saying goodbye. <laughs>